Hey everyone, I'm Maddie Beard. I'm a product designer currently working in food tech and over on my YouTube channel, I make videos about design, productivity, and life as a creative. You might be wondering why we're in the kitchen. Today, I have something really fun planned. We're actually going to be looking at this toaster in so much more detail than you've ever looked at a toaster before. And through that, we're gonna go over eight usability heuristics, in other words, principles or rules that are at the center of good UX. But before we dive in, I want to quickly tell you about Envato Elements. Envato Elements is a library of creative assets all ready to use with simple commercial licensing. When you subscribe with the link down below in the description, you'll get access to unlimited UI kits, web templates, fonts, and other really useful stuff. Okay, now for the toaster content that you're all here for. Okay, let's evaluate this toaster against the eight usability heuristics that we're going to be talking about. Number one is visibility of status, and it's all about keeping the user informed about what's going on in a clear and timely manner. So in the case of this toaster, what might a user care about? They would care about whether the toast is actually toasting and maybe when it's gonna be done. So how successful is this toaster in both of those things? Well, when we press this down, we know it's toasting because it stays down and starts to get warm. And we can even look in and see that the coals are heating up and getting orange. When it comes to when is the toast gonna be done, this model doesn't do that very well. Some models, this is actually a dial. So it works kind of like a timer. You can twist it and then as time goes by, it's going to go back to zero. So you know how much time is left. This model doesn't do that. So it could definitely stand to be improved in the visibility of status category. Number two, a match between the system and the real world. So a lot of times this is talked about on mobile devices where we're actually not talking about a physical product, but things in the design mimic the physical world, such as a button looking like it sticks up because of the shadow. That mimics how a button looks in the physical world. But there are some things we can talk about with this toaster when it comes to this principle. For example, as we push the lever down, the bread actually goes down. It mimics what we would expect to happen in the real world. And in this example, where there's actually two levers, because of the design and the layout, it's really easy to tell which lever maps with which slots. Number three is user control and freedom. People often do things by mistake, so it's important that the design allows for people to undo an action or back out of something that is unwanted or unintended. This toaster gets an A plus in that category. It has a cancel button, super clear right here. So if I decide that I actually want a different type of bread or that I want want to end this early because I don't want it to be too dark, I can just hit cancel. Number four is consistency and standards. People shouldn't have to learn something new if it's not absolutely necessary. So good UX follows industry and platform standards and doesn't try to reinvent the wheel. This toaster definitely follows consistency and standards, but this one, not so much. While the touchscreen may seem cool at first, it's likely less user-friendly because users aren't accustomed to interfacing with a touchscreen in the context of toasting bread. I've used a toaster like this before and I remember I wasn't looking for this tiny little start button so it took me a long time to figure out how to use this. Number five is error prevention. Have you ever put your bread in the toaster, pushed down the lever, and then it pops right back up and then again? It probably didn't take you very long to realize the reason why. The toaster wasn't plugged in. Instead of allowing you to walk away thinking that your bread was toasting, the machine is designed to not let you do that, helping you avoid this time-wasting error. Number six, recognition rather than recall. Users shouldn't have to remember something from one part of the interface to another. Clearly labeled buttons really helps with this. This toaster doesn't rely on icons to label each of these buttons. It uses words that we all know, so you don't have to remember anything or try to figure anything out when using this. Number seven is a big one, flexibility and efficiency of use. No two people are exactly the same, so it's important that devices are flexible and allow for customization and personalization. This is important for a toaster because everyone has different preferences when it comes to how dark they like their bread toasted. If I asked you to look at this dial and tell me how many options you thought that a user had when it comes to how dark they want their toast, you might say seven at first glance, but there's actually infinite amount of choices because this dial doesn't just click from three 
to four to five. You can set it in the middle or you can set it just a hair past four. The options are endless. And this actually matters because what if five is too light for you and six is too dark? If there were just seven buttons, you wouldn't be able to achieve what you want, but with this flexible dial, you can. Lastly, number eight is aesthetic and minimalistic design. Good user interfaces don't contain information that's irrelevant or rarely needed. Only what's necessary to help the user achieve their goal. This toaster is great. It's fairly simple. We have options for bagel, defrost, and reheat. In my opinion, reheat might not be totally necessary, but maybe other people use it. This model, on the other hand, goes kind of overboard. There's options for bread, bagel, waffle, English muffin, and pastry. In my opinion, this is too much and is going to overwhelm the user. Okay, that's it for our evaluation of this toaster. Overall, I would give it an A-. minus. All right, friends, I really hope that gave you a nice baseline understanding of these eight usability heuristics. Don't forget to check out Envato Elements, and maybe I'll see you over on my channel. Bye.